Now it's spread to the U.S. and it's not quite as established here, but there are definitely chapters in major cities and there have been actions. People maybe saw a couple of people that got arrested in Congress um, a couple weeks ago, but yeah. Um, to get away from fossil fuels in our world. So, um, and we have a lot of talent in our country that's being wasted because we're building the next generation of nuclear and space-based weapons. All yours, Sue. Thank you, Mary Beth. <laughs> Mary Beth didn't mention that we also knew each other before at Pebble Street <laughs> when I was there full time. Um, and I'm there now as a volunteer three days a week. So I'm here because um, I'm, my primary focus has been for years with 350 Maine. And I have just been really, really frustrated that 350 Maine is so polite. And I have come to several demonstrations with um, Bruce's group and have been really impressed by their willingness to organize and step up and take certain risks. And now I'm no longer the primary caretaker of my grandchildren. They're more independent now. I feel like I am ready to take more risks. And then I met Jordan. And um, got really excited about XR. I had been following XR. Thank goodness for electronics, even as frustrating as they are. And um, with through XR, I will soon be getting some training for um, nonviolent um, resistance. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm really excited. The, oh, the other piece of the 350 thing is that when 350 decided that they would finally endorse you guys, endorse this movement for the sake of the workers, that got really exciting to me because I think that's some, one of the things that um, people out there have forgotten that if Bath Ironworks can work for the people, can give good work to the workers of Maine. They, they can feel take some real pride instead of always just doing war machine. So that's it for me. You're on. I'm Dave Trafton. Uh, I sit with Open Heart Sangha in Yarmouth. And uh, while I would like to be part of all of these discussion groups today, it seems to me that the environment is where it's at. Because if we don't take care of this, then all these others just go by the wayside. And uh, I'm a former social worker. Joe Chrysler was one of my teachers. So. Uh, Joe Chrysler founded uh, Travel State. Yes. Anything else, Dave? What are you looking for here? Looking for uh, ways to be more involved. All right, Dan, you want to say anything? Why'd I you just walked in. So why'd you stick your head in this one? Rather, rather <laughs> one? Uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, uh, certainly, uh, the issues with with uh, weapons and, uh, around the world, how it's affecting everybody, how what we the price we pay on a daily basis, and so forth. Um, and it all all has to do a uh, combination with, with what's going on in the military, but. Uh, but with how it influences the environment. All right, well, let me start with a story about this guy on the camera, Peter Woodruff. Peter, how many years did you work at BIW? 30? 30, 33. 33 years. He re re retired a few years ago. And Peter's been a part of the local peace community for many years, including while he was working at BIW. And he was educating workers inside of BIW all that time that we've known him, which is 10, 12 years, something like that. Uh, he did many, many different things. But the greatest thing he did was he started a petition that said, we BIW workers want to build wind turbines. And he and a few others gathered 800 signatures of BIW workers. 
saying they wanted to build wind turbines. He made a bumper sticker that said, Save BIW, build wind turbines. He passed them out. People put them on their trucks, on their lunch pails that they carried inside the, the uh, facility. After he gathered the 800 signatures, he said to me, okay, what do I do now? And I said, well, what if we went and had a meeting with the editorial board at the Times Record, the local newspaper? At that time, uh, the guy that was taking the pictures of us was counting Jim McCarthy. He was the, at that time, he was the editor of the paper. So we went and had a meeting with him. Peter brought the petitions, and McCarthy wrote an editorial congratulating Peter, who went into that meeting saying to me, you know, I'm probably going to get fired now, <laughs> because if they write anything in the paper, I'm probably going to get fired. You, well, you sure you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. McCarthy writes an editorial congratulating Peter Woodruff for his courage for his foresight, his vision. And he asked the question in his editorial, whoever thought the Navy base would close? And this mid-coast community would be so disrupted economically as a result of it, okay? Maybe we should start talking about some process of conversion in the community for many reasons, okay? And it was a fantastic editorial. Peter did not get fired. I believe it was cover for him. How could they dare fire him after that? And so it wasn't too long after that. It was Baldacci was the governor. Baldacci sent a team of environmental experts to tour Norway, Sweden, Denmark to look at their offshore wind turbine farms that they have. And Bath Ironworks sent someone along with them. And when they came back, Bath Ironworks went to the city council of Bath and asked for a zoning variance to allow them to build a tower of sorts that would allow them to build offshore wind turbines. Because at that way, at that time, the Norwegian, a Norwegian company was exploring building wind turbines off the coast of Maine. Fast forward to LePage getting an office. He scotches the deal. He shut it down. That went away. But I believe that the reason why Bath Ironworks sent that person along on that trip and went to the city of Bath to get that zoning variance is because they got the message from their own workforce. Today they have about 5,500 workers. At that time they might have had 45, let's say 4,500, because they've gotten more contracts in the last few years. Uh, so one out of every four or five workers essentially signed that petition. And Peter said we could have got more, but we just didn't have enough people collecting them, you know, because they have many sites, BIW does, between Bath and Brunswick and everything else. They just couldn't get to everybody. So they would have got more signatures. So now, a couple years ago, you might have heard that General Dynamics that owns Bath Ironworks asked the state for $60 million tax break. If they didn't get it, they might, they inferred publicly, they might have to move somewhere else, shut the operation down, blackmail. Well, we got together, we put our heads together and decided we needed to do a campaign to oppose this. And I said, after my first experience of going to the Judiciary Committee hearing in Augusta where they, this bill was brought forward and seeing the bullshit politics going on inside the State House, I came home that night and laying in bed talking to Mary Beth and I told her, I'm going to have a heart attack before this campaign is over because I'm so upset. So if I do a hunger strike, I said, it will calm me down and I'll because I get more serene when I do a hunger strike and I'll be able to survive. 
So I did a hunger strike, I think it was 37 days, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And on my first day, I went to Bath Iron Works and I went to the Union Hall of Essex, Machinist Union, <coughs> the largest union, represents about 3,500 workers at BIW. And I went in and I had flyers, a half page flyer that I was gonna hand out to workers during the lunch hour. And I went in and there was a room with about five guys sitting at a table. And I said, I just wanted you to know that I'm starting this and I handed them the flyer. And we're starting this campaign against this and I'm doing this hunger strike. I just wanted you to know that it's not about you. We're not protesting the workers. It's about the product, blah, 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 blah. And this guy reaches over and he picks up this newsletter, or this magazine, The Bollard, has now become renamed The Mainer. And it's got a front cover story about this tax break that DIW is asking for. And it trashes it, and it's a fantastic, unbelievable story. It's beautiful, the best thing I've ever seen written anywhere near the subject. And uh, he holds it up. And he doesn't even have to say anything. It's like, we got it, man, we understand. We understand what you're talking about. And what we later learned was that someone in the union was taking that article throughout the shipyard and educating the workers about this. And in the, by the time the bill was voted on, the politicians, they were under so much pressure because our campaign was so good across the state. We had a hundred letters to the editor in every single newspaper practically in the state of Maine, over 25 papers. We had 100 letters to the editor during that campaign. Politicians are getting a lot of pressure. They wanted the union to say, we support this bill because it would relieve some of the political pressure. We're just doing this for the workers. But the union, they took a vote and they voted 50-50. And I was told by one of the workers that the debate was so intense they couldn't come to a consensus on supporting this bill. <laughs> and as I leaf-footed the workers virtually every day, at least during the first uh, about three weeks of, the, of my hunger strike, at noontime and then at the end of the day, I talked to many, many workers who said, you know, I'd rather be building something else. I don't feel good about what we're building. So it's been clear to me for a long time, starting with Peter and then following through to more recent times, that we are not offending very many workers at BIW when we go there with this message. They get it, and especially the, the, Peter's generation are now retiring, and there's a whole younger generation your age working there. They grew up in main schools with main education about climate change. A lot of these younger guys understand the issue, right? They understand. But it's a job, it's a damn good paying job. It's got some benefits. So our message to them is, look, we're not trying to have you lose your job. We're trying to convert to this other direction. Now studies at UMass Amherst and Brown University show and have shown for years that if we converted Bath Ironworks, we would essentially damn near double the jobs because military spending is the worst way to create jobs, that every other kind of production is labor intensive, whereas military spending is capital intensive. I urge you to look at this banner flapping right here on the edge of the tent when we're done. It was made by Veterans for Peace and it addresses the workers, how we support the workers. We're just trying to build something else uh, in a positive way. Let me just talk a little bit about, I think it's fairly obvious, everybody pretty much knows this, but we have eight, U.S. has more than 800 bases around the world. When you look at all the things that the military does, driving tanks around, trucks around, airplanes around, ships around, you add up all that fossil fuel, you add up all that pollution that comes out of them, you add, you know, bombing and wars, everything that comes from that. Oil wars, you're bombing oil fields, they're on fire, 
the pollution from them. It's just a massive carbon boot print by the military. The largest industrial boot print on the planet is coming from the Pentagon. So how in the hell can we dream of dealing with climate change if we don't also include this military connection? And as you well said, Peter, the money, the money is going to the Pentagon. The discretionary budget is the part of the national budget that the Congress actually votes on. The latest figures are 55, 56, 57 cents out of every dollar in the discretionary budget is going to the Pentagon. And that doesn't include departments like the Department of Energy that is in charge of nuclear weapons. It's not part of the Pentagon budget. So it's, you know, there are hidden pots of gold in Washington and various other agencies. When you add all that in, we're probably around 60 cents of every dollar is going towards the Pentagon. So it's obvious to us. So our strategy is, okay, we want to help on climate change. We're mostly peaceniks. What's the largest manifestation of this problem in our state? In our community. In the old days, when I, uh, some years ago, 20, 25 years ago, they talked about, in the environmental movement, they used the word bioregion. What's in your bioregion? All right, where you live. Deal with that. That's your contribution to the, the global campaign. So what is the largest manifestation of this uh, carbon boot print in our bioregion? Well, it's bath ironworks. And so we decided, let's go there and let's drive this issue. Let's try to make this point. Let's try to uh, show this uh, conversion idea and help the public begin to understand it, thinking that if we could build the consciousness amongst the people in our state, then we could possibly turn the politicians in another direction. Get Pingree and Golden and Collins and uh, Angus King, who claims he's an environmentalist, who at one time was talking about offshore wind, but now loves to build uh, you know, anything military. Uh, so anyway, that's our strategy. So lately, as uh, Rob Shutterly said, we've had 47 people arrested at the end of April and the end of June, a total of 47 people arrested. And uh, in the case of the people in uh, end of April, they dropped the charges unexpectedly. And this time they're lowering the charges to a traffic ticket, to equivalent of a traffic ticket. So. Uh, they're getting a little bit tired of having us come there and uh, disrupting their christening ceremonies. Uh, but uh, they're also not wanting to give us trials and things like that that give us an opportunity for more media exposure. So we're in the process now of brainstorming our next strategies for action around Bath Ironworks. Uh, and uh, we've got a lot of artists that are looking into new creative uh, ways of uh, using art and street theater and everything else uh, to take this message out uh, in the community. So I'm going to stop there. How, what time is it now? We're, uh, oh, we've only got 15 minutes. Um, one of the things I like about XR is the, the urgency what, what we're hearing is the urgency of pulling all of us together, whether we're 350, whether we're um, a natural guard, you know, big and little, pulling us all together and that we're all basically concerned about the same thing. They're in, you know, whether it's a poor people's campaign, whether it's an environmental campaign, whether it's a militant, um, anti-military campaign you know that we can all work together and that we need to do that and the bigger the more we do that the bigger our campaigns can be 
and the more of an impact we can make on the public and on for that. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to bring together groups of craft and list of demands yeah. for the strike. Um, it's, uh, it's called a strike, but it's going to be more of a rally and a yeah. Yeah. protest and yeah, in front of City Hall in, in if Portland. We, if, if, I mean, we haven't gotten that far, but I think in the next couple of weeks we will. Like, is our focus going to be Maine or is it going to be national? Um, I think we're 350 Maine. I think it's going to be Maine. I think it needs to be Maine. It would seem like, again, getting yeah. back to the bioregion idea. Is yeah. We work where we live. Yeah. Let me ask Peter, is your group, I don't know much about your group, uh, are on you, our spreadsheet. You, you're in on this whole coalition thing too? Or? Um, I would say yes and no. Uh, Citizens Climate Lobby is laser focused on uh, building relationships with members of Congress. So we would disagree with Frederick Douglass. We would say that the only way you influence people is by, well, I should put it exactly that way. We're, we're in favor of direct act, nonviolent action. But we're not part of that. We do not take part in street protests. We work inside the halls of Congress, member of Congress by member of Congress, with all members of Congress, uh, to get them to uh, do, uh, adopt a, an effective policy to reduce carbon emissions that also incorporates social justice. One comment I have, I would urge, if you haven't done it already, I think a very important website um, that you should check out is uh, is at Brown University. Brown University has the Watson Institute, but if you just Google costs, costs plural, costs of war at Brown University, um, they, they have a lot of really important data um, reflecting the uh, carbon footprint um, that the military, uh, the Pentagon, leaves across the world. So it's really, if you really want to understand the climate issue, understanding the Pentagon's influence or the war influence on that issue is really critical. Uh, of course, this website also looks at the, <coughs> excuse me, the human costs of war. But they have uh, important data in terms of uh, the costs of war, cost is plural, um, at Brown University. The Watson Institute, um, it's important data. It's if you want to be doing data-driven work, uh, they offer really a really clear perspective on um, on the ravages of war on the environment. Um, yeah, Thank you. Uh, they, and they also, um, if you ha you have to dig deep for this, but they it, the study that Bruce is talking about. There's a woman who works with them called um, Heidi Peltier, and she can articulate beautifully. Um, how much more productive our workforce would be if we were building anything other than military weapons. We're almost out of time. Jordan, you want to say anything before we... Um, I guess, yeah, I, if, if we don't meet up to talk about the September 20th strikes, if that doesn't end up happening, I do think it definitely makes sense to have some sort of convergence of ecologically minded, anti-war minded, social justice minded groups in Maine that are focused on building campaign under like the intent of ecological justice. And um, yeah, I definitely like to stay in contact. And I, I will say I haven't spoken much about the other organization that I'm a part of, but I am a member of the DSA and we're having our national convention this weekend. And it looks like we're poised to endorse a eco-socialist Green New Deal um, at the convention and perhaps like, shift a major portion of our work to focusing on um, ecological justice. So that's also, also going to be a major ally for playing this. And so are you talking today and tomorrow or it's next weekend? The convention is happening right now. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where at? Uh, Atlanta. Oh, 